In this lesson, we will try to further explore modeling options in the Revit Family Editor, uh, basing our exercise on the chart that you see on the screen. Although the seating area and the back area is relatively simple and you already probably know how to model it using simple extrusions, the metal frame of the chair might cause you some problems. So I will show you how we can create such a 3D sweep. Let's go back to Revit and start creating a new family. I will also select metric furniture template and start to create this metal frame. This metal frame will be created by sweep and uh, as you remember sweep needs some path. This path will be created by reference lines. But let me explain first what exactly is a reference line. I will draw a sample line and go to the 3D view. When I click on it, you can see planes that are inside this line at the beginning, at the end and along it. So when I'm in the set work plane mode, I can select pick a plane option, shortcut PK, it's good to remember this shortcut, we will be using it often. And once in the picking uh, tool mode, picking plane mode, I can select any of the plane that belong to this line. So I think uh, you already know where I will be going with it in this, in this lesson. So let me carry on with drawing a path, which, which, which will be a base for our sweep. Since this particular chair doesn't come in many sizes, just maybe different color, different texture, I will not focus on um, parametrizing, parametrizing its geometry. I will just create a fixed dimension. So let me start again. Create reference line. I will add this to quick access toolbar because I will often use it. Or you can drag out this datum panel somewhere on your screen. It's up to you which method you prefer. Okay, so I will select a reference line. I'm in, on the reference level and we'll start drawing something. Let's say 45 centimeters here, 300 here and 400 640 here. So I have three lines ready. Let me window style and zoom all my geometry once again. And now when I'm in a 3D view, I will use set work plane. Pick a plane and I will pick a vertical plane along this line. I will go to the front view and again go back to reference line. Now I will draw this part and this part and this one. Modify. Let's see how it looks like in a 3D. And carry on in a, with the same method. I will set a work plane. Maybe I will activate showing a work plane if you if you you are not clear how it works yet. So I can set a work plane, pick a plane again, and this time I will select this work plane on top. And you see, this is this show plane um, from Revit that, that is helping us. So still being in a 3D view, I will go to top. Okay. Again, reference line. We'll search for the end point of this line and draw something. Okay. All I have to do now is to mirror the part I created. So the best place to do it will be a reference plane, reference level, sorry. I will select all of them. Select mirror pick axis with a copy active and select it here. Okay, so my path is ready. I can slightly adjust some of the elements, like maybe make it a little bit shorter. 
but basically that's it. So I will disable showing work plane and go to sweep. Pick path. Accept the path, edit profile, go to the top view and draw some circle, let's say 10 millimeters. Okay, so the steel frame is ready and as you remember uh, it's still attached to the reference plane I drew. So if I modify something, let's say this part, the geometry will follow. Okay, you can also see reference planes if you uh, go into wireframe mode in a 3D view. But let me uh, show you how you can create a roundings for this for this uh, frame. I will delete this sweep for a moment and explain one thing. If I go to reference line mode again, but before I do it, uh, I need to set a work plane because when I enter the reference line tool, you see, unfortunately, there isn't an option for me to switch a plane from here. I think it's a little bit inconvenient and uh, if someone from Revit developers is listening to this video, maybe they should add the option to, to modify reference plane from directly from the reference line tool. But for now, we just have to remember to set a work plane first. So I will go back to reference level go back to reference line and use fillet arc tool. Okay, so I will fillet this one and this one. And you can see that, for example, these two lines cannot be filled because I'm on the wrong reference plane. So again, I have to pick a plane, which is this one, go back to reference plane, and then try to fill these two lines and these two. Because this line is on a different uh, reference plane than this one, the rounding uh, using this method is impossible. Uh, which plane uh, On which plane the reference line is, you can read from the properties. When I select it, there is a work plane parameter and I can just simply read it. You see that this one is attached to the reference level and this one is to uh, attached to one of the planes of the reference line. So it's impossible to create a rounding using this method. I would have to manually draw, draw it. So again, I would have to go to the set work plane mode, pick a plane, this one, and then in a reference tool mode, I would have to draw start and radius arc instead of fillet arc. So let me draw something basic. Okay, we have something like that. And I now I will try to trim it. This and this part. Here's the same situation. Reference line. drawing and trimming. I don't know what happened, but I have extra lines, so I will use this one. So since this rounding is pretty complicated anyway, I can use again a mirror tool. and delete this line. Okay. If there are some gaps, you can always use trim extend to corner. The same here. And 
these are all fixed dimensions so it's not parametric imagine how much more complicated would it be if I will try to parameterize everything so if there is no need like in this case where the size is the same then just don't do it so let me quickly create a sweep again I will pick a path maybe five millimeters now the only thing that is left to do is to draw some extrusions for the seating area So you can see that the chair is ready. I was trying to flex it a little bit by moving some of the uh, reference lines. But as you see, there is already some kind of problems with line not following uh, the geometry. So although at first it looks pretty fine, then there might be some problems if we try to modify it. So if you really want to uh, practice and uh, and create a parametric chair like that I would advise you to use a combination of reference plane plus reference line so if you want to further extend your knowledge just try to parameterize such chair and of course let us know how it went <laughs>